Good afternoon, friends. Miss Quast here to share a story with you called Dear Earth by Isabel Otter and Clara Anganuzzi. And this is a wonderful story about Tessa, who loves the earth and wants to protect the beauty of nature. And so she's going to write a letter about all the wondrous things that she noticed in the earth. And it's, this is a really neat book because we get to go through many different ecosystems around the globe, see different animals, different things like jungles and oceans and deserts, and it has an important message that we need to protect nature so that it's around for future generations. I hope you enjoy. Dear Earth, Canadian geese there. When Tessa and Grandpa went walking, he would tell her about the Earth. Grandpa had been an explorer once. He had seen many wondrous things and loved to tell Tessa about his adventures. As Grandpa talked, pictures were painted in Tessa's mind. She decided to write a letter to the earth. But where to begin? Start by writing, Dear Earth, then let your imagination flow, said Grandpa. So she's got things to inspire her, some books about the earth, some little models of ships, a journal, maybe that's her grandfather's journal from his adventures. Dear Earth, Tessa began. The sea roared in the distance, and Tessa continued to write. My grandpa has told me a lot about you, and you sound wonderful. One day, I'm going to be an explorer, just like grandpa. And off she goes into the ocean. Most of your surface is covered with water. I want to dive into your deep oceans and see shoals of swirling fish. I'd blow bubbles with the whales and glide like a turtle. I'd love to explore your lands too. When the animals stampede, I'd run, run amongst them. My heart would beat as loudly as their thundering hooves. And this picture is really neat because it's showing us a bird's eye view. It's as if you're a bird flying above the savanna and looking at the animals stampeding. You are home to gigantic mega beasts as well as teeny weeny creatures. I want to run through your meadows and kiss the butterflies, splash under waterfalls, and float in blue lagoons. Oh, how dreamy those pictures are. Part of you is frozen over. Do you ever feel cold? Grandpa says that unicorns swim in the Arctic. Do you know what those creatures are called? They do look a lot like unicorns with their long horns. Those are narwhals. You have a spine of mountains that tower over everything. Some of them have their heads in the clouds. And those are the tallest of mountains if their heads touch the clouds. In the underwater forests of the mangroves, sharks keep their babies safe. I'd like to slide down desert dunes, but avoid the prickly cacti. When the bears go fishing, I'd watch and dip my toes in the river. And they're eating all those salmon. Oh, look at this page, you guys. Up in your rainforest canopy, I would join in with the screeching hullabaloo of the birds and monkeys. A hullabaloo is a great sound. There's so many details in this picture. She couldn't fit it on one page. She had to go between two pages. Up here, this is the canopy where all the leaves are and the trees are. These are very old, old trees. And sometimes there's places in the jungle where the forest floor doesn't even get any sunlight. And so some of these creatures live in the shadows. There's a jaguar, macaw, different monkeys. Oh, that looks like a howler monkey howling away. High in the sky, I would fly with the birds, soaring and swooping, up, up, I'd go 
Would you like to fly if given the chance? Earth, you are full of such wonder, but you're fragile and you need love and care. Grandpa says that humans have hurt you, but we can heal you too. When something is fragile, it means that it's very delicate and you have to be careful. The sea continued to roar in the distance as she finished her letter simply, Love from Tessa, with a kiss. And some of the birds that she met on her adventure are there in the evening sky. Grandpa and Tess walked down the beach together. I wish everyone knew how special Earth is, said Tessa. Do you think if people realized, then they would want to look after the world and keep it safe? Yes, I do, said Grandpa, taking Tessa's hand. Perhaps if enough of us share the message, we can still save our dear Earth. And that's when the story passes to you, boys and girls, because we need your help to keep our Earth safe. And at the back of this story, it shows us a little letterhead. What would you write if you could write a story to the Earth? Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed that story.